And I, uh, I hope you're not starting to record. Well, why did you think I started to record yet? <laughs> because you just paused like that. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I found the perfect time to press mm-hmm. record. Uh, so, Neil, do you know this is number 55 of the Strength Hammer podcast? 55. All right. We're yeah. doing it. We're, we're doing it. And we're getting a few more subscribers here and there. It's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. Nice. Nice. Yeah, so welcome, to everybody, welcome to everybody new. Uh, I'm glad you found this nice place of the internet where we don't give a shit about the meta or reading FAQs or reviewing army books. We trust you guys. You can do it yourself. We just talk about whatever nonsense we like. Right. And hopefully you uh, drink bourbon and paint models while you're listening to us. Yes. Or me. I have a lovely <laughs> cup of tea tonight. I wanted something warm. I don't know why because it was 80 fucking degrees today. <laughs> Mm. I went on like a mile walk with the wife and then I did an arm workout and I'm just like, man, you know what sounds good? Nice cup of tea. And guess what tea flavor it is? Cause we only have one type of tea here in this house right now. It's Earl gray. It's black. I wish it was. Cause that's my preferred oh. one. <clears throat> the only tea we have in the house is just like random Christmas flavors. So this is gingerbread. Oof. Oof. <laughs> I'm like, gingerbread uh, tea. Oh. <laughs> it's all right. It's not terrible. Um, but I didn't want coffee. Coffee be a little too much, too late right now. But Neil, how have you been? What's going on? Uh, I'm doing good. I wish I could. Uh, I know we're not uh, to our hobby segment yet, but uh, I've been busy boy this past okay. weekend. As, uh, I, I stated I would be, so I really have nothing to report on um, on fitness okay. or on hobby at all. <laughs> all right so. last week anyway so I, I got some work to do <clears throat> all right um, I w- actually i do have one thing to mention please um big m has stated multiple times he's going to ship me all of my caradron models but i haven't seen those show up just yet so i feel like i'm uh you know i'm getting tugged around here a little bit a little, so. a little tugboat action <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. so when that arrives matt um, I will, I will start hobbying here a little bit more. I got you. There you go. There you go. Uh, my fitness continues to be going to the gym three to four times a week, having a good time. Still don't have any plan as far as what I want other than just going to the gym. So, and that's perfectly fine because that's more than a lot of people. <laughs> so it's go to the me. <laughs> yep. So Neil and everybody that doesn't go to the gym, go to the fucking gym. <laughs> <laughs> there you go public service announcement uh hobby oh boy um but it's weird my hobby blends together but i'm doing less hobby right now so i apologize if you're watching the video because i'm looking down at my phone right now uh let's see last week i mentioned that you sent me that king thorgrim but did i finish painting that at that point you did. Okay. Yes. All right. Perfect. Then after that, what I've painted up has been the lion, the new model, and his lion's guard, the blade guard veterans, mm-hmm. uh, a Primaris repulsor executioner tank. Uh, that was fun. That was actually done early this morning. Before that's really nice. By the way. Yeah, I was. That's a fun tank. Like you know how I, like we love the KO boats because the boats are cool. Mm-hmm. Man, these tanks just hit. Like there's no not nostalgia, but it still reminds me so much of just. Being a kid with a big beefy tank going, brr, 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 brr. Right, right, right. of course, yeah, <laughs> that's half the reason why we play these games, right? Exactly. So, <laughs> I, yeah, I was thrilled to have that. Plus, it's just another new cool model to have. Uh, outside of that, I also kit bashed. Uh, I think you'll appreciate this, Neil. Archon the Black, but I did for my old Tomb Kings army. Oh yeah, I was really happy with the way that looked. Yeah. Yeah, and I call it kit bash, but it's really just kind of like reposing because it's just the arc on the black from the Mortar kit. I just reshaped the legs, had the actually the the cloak. I cut it down because like it's a huge cloak. I cut mm-hmm. it down, and it's like a spider web thing. Um, and then what I did is I just took a lighter and I kind of like melted the edges so it looked more oh, wicked. Oh, nice! Yeah, yeah. It, it was super easy. Um, it smelled like hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, don't, a year or two off your life. Yeah, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that, kids. Um, outside that, got to oh, I, I picked up my store anniversary model from uh the Warhammer store, which was the KO model holding the little tiny boat. Yeah, I'm jealous because I forgot that that guy was holding that little tiny boat. And you're like, do you want one? I'm like, nah, I got an admiral coming already. Well, and the guy with the little tiny boat was like, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, Big M got two, and there's two head options: one with the boat, one without the boat. 
So obviously he built the boat one first. Matt built one of each. So oh. he has that boat bit. He might be able to get it off of him. Ooh. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I'd probably have to let him win a game. You know? Ooh, don't do that. And not like tell him that it won, you know. <laughs> <laughs> <I'd let> him. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, I know that I got to play some fantasy at Club Day recently, some kill team. Uh, so yeah, just just having a good time. And then I got the super secret. Um, I almost said it. <laughs> I almost said the actual super secret thing, the, the, G, <laughs> the GW uh, build thing that I'm doing that I can't say because it's like a blind special buy thing. So uh, look forward to that at Gen Con. Uh, but yeah, that's. Oh, oh, wait, one more thing actually. Thanks to our. Mutual friend Brad, he gave me this gem. I, 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 my favorite Warhammer Fantasy 8th edition scenario was Watchtower. I know a lot of people are like, boo, hiss, then you can get bent people because I loved it so much. <laughs> and I have fond memories of playing with that old Watchtower model itself. Mm -hmm. But never had one. Obviously, they're completely unavailable right now. You can't find them anywhere. Uh, the only place I know that has them is the hobby shop where I painted theirs up, but I didn't feel like going in and asking if they'd sell it to me. And obviously mm -hmm. we use them at the GW um, US Opens because they're pretty good terrain, but I'm not going to take those because that's weird. <laughs> but I was always on the hunt, and someone came through to me. So <clears throat> I finally have my official Games Workshop Watchtower from 8th edition. Nice. Yeah, it is it is primed gray. Uh, I'll be painting that here in the coming days. I'm going to expect, uh, you know, a fully detailed terrain piece there, if that's uh, one of your favorites, you know. It is. It's not going to be a quick rush job, because I have a, you know, I have lots of terrain, so I'm going to have a fantasy-specific table, and that's going to be mm -hmm. on it for Watchtower specific. I'll have some, probably some Tayrathi graffiti going on in the corner, maybe some, like, you know, other things, like, some that says, like, Skaven suck. I don't know. Yeah. Because they do. They, <laughs> they suck. They do suck. Yeah. Agree. So that is pretty much my hobby. Um, like I said, it's not a lot because I don't feel like buying and painting an army right now. Yeah. <laughs> I have no need. How do, how do you feel about the um, the monstrous Arcanum going the way of the uh, the dinosaur here? Mm. Any thoughts there? <clears throat> it's it, it's not so much as a thought um, per se. Is, I mean. I, do I care? No, I really don't care. Um, that's it, it's fine. I like I whatever you adapt. Um, the thing that I the thing that like I, I guess I'm I'm personally unhappy about is if I was ever going to do a Seraphon army, I wanted to do it with the Dread Sarian. That's the only model I'm sad to see yeah. gone. The only yeah. one. It's a cool model. It would be fun to have a big stompy dinosaur. Um, Maybe the troll hag. That one was good. Uh, I, I the troll tag never did it for me. Well, it never did it for me either. I just thought it was kind of funny, <laughs> and I enjoyed other people having them. I would never have bought one myself, but I would have right. bought the uh, Dread Saurian. Yeah, but that, that's also it's like, eh. But I'm not too concerned because now I have an excuse to not do Seraphon. <laughs> Thank goodness. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. But no, not, your your thoughts on it at all? Like generally um, speaking. You know, I'm kind of sad to see, you know, the big stompy monsters go, but it seems like Forge World for AOS was never really a thing anyway. Never really got any support. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I feel bad for the guys who bought that corn dragon. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I remember seeing that at uh, one of the Adepticons on that, you know, big old dinner plate of a of a base that it had and everything. Um, I just feel bad for that kind of stuff. Like if you bought one recently and all that, you know, but at the same time, you knew it wasn't getting much support, so hopefully you bought it because the model was cool. It was something yeah. you wanted to display. Um, you know what? Use it in, use it in some role playing games or whatever. Use it in your narrative games. If you have a corn dragon and you don't want it anymore because it doesn't have match play rules, and you want to send it to me so I can use it narratively, um, I am available. I will put my address. Out there. <laughs> That's a good. I will take. I will hmm. take that off your hands. It's interesting. Yeah, if you have a Dread Saurian out there, anybody, I'd be willing to take it off you for next to nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, next to nothing. Next to nothing, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. You'll get back, uh, you know, some some of your, your initial investment. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'll trade you in models. How about that? 
But uh, yeah, no. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much where I am with that. Facts were fine. I don't have any problem with any of the facts. Yeah, uh, so. I, 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 I will still always say Marathi Kane should never be 700 points. She should be below that 690 max. That's all I have to say on every FAQ that ever comes out. Till that gets corrected, <laughs> there's no hope. There's no hope. <laughs> well, now we have we have a, a simpler topic for tonight, and and we're we're moving through such a good click tonight. Uh, I know last time we said it'd be a shorter episode. This one might actually be a shorter episode, uh, but <laughs> with uh, your current work schedule, that's probably a good thing for you. I bet. Well. Yeah. Oh that's, way. A, oh, that's a big, big glass of bourbon you gotta get through, so we'll see. <laughs> sure is. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight we wanted to talk about, um, well, some chat, yeah, uh, get into Wargaming. So get into Warhammer. So Warhammer is a hard thing to get into, and I'm not going to take it per se from, like, mm. well, I, mean, I guess we could talk, talk briefly upon, like, how to get models, how to start painting it, but I'm more of uh, the mind of what do you do when you're going to games? How do you view your first games as a war gamer? So I think uh, that is where you make and break, make or break your love of this hobby really quickly on those first couple of games on the table. Right. But we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. if you are yeah. if you are getting into it for the gaming, right? I know that there are some people who exclusively do collection and stuff like that. Which sure. that's all cool. I think we're more talking about the people who are planning on playing the game. Right. That's what I say. It's called. I'm calling this this title or this episode. Get into war gaming, not get into hobbying, not get into miniature painting. Like that's all fine. If that's and if that's where you're at, God bless. Uh, so yeah. So. You know, I guess we could think back to the start of our hobby journey. So it was a very different time for us yeah. compared to what it is now. So <laughs> I know I had a high elf. Uh, was it the army box, battalion box, battalion box? That's what it was. Mm. So it was kind of like the start collecting at the time. Did you have something similar? Did you get like an island, island or not island blood, but like a start? Well, what stuff? I started with was fourth edition fantasy, um, the orcs and goblins versus. Uh, uh, so it's Grom the Paunch v uh, Eltharian, nice. and uh, those two were cardboard cutouts in that uh, in that box. Yes, they were. So I, I started out very young. Um, I was, I think, maybe 11 years old, 10, 11 years old at the time. <clears throat> so that was fourth edition fantasy, and in those days, uh, video games were much, much less immersive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that kind of thing was uh, super cool to me. You know, I, I sometimes worry, like these days, you know, video games and just the instant gratification of that kind of thing, you know, how uh, how the future of war gaming will go. But hopefully uh, it, it remains a strong thing for the younger generation to kind of get into because, <clears throat> uh, you know, when you're talking about this kind of episode, you hope you're gearing this towards not just people with disposable income, like right. like a... Yeah. But also, you know, the younger generation who maybe kind of, you know, gets their first miniatures and starts mm-hmm. down that path as well. So um, that's the way I did it. And I hope uh, I hope that's still true for, for many. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, it's it's right now, if you were to start Wargaming, I mean, first and foremost, what I would say always is find an army you like, go on YouTube, type in Age of Sigmar armies, Get some, get you know, go to the website, Games Workshop's website. Look at look at pictures of models. Which one grabs you? Don't read any rule. Read zero rules. Just mm-hmm. look at the models because that's what you're going to spend most of your time with. And that's what right. you're going to become like sort of identified with too. Uh, you know, from your opponents across the table. So, yeah. First and foremost, you start there. But then, yeah, to to your point there, it's you know maybe there's a Starter set. They do a lot more starter sets now, per se, where it's two sides fighting one another. So if you have a friend, and it lines up that you both want what's on the other side, that's always a great place to start. Or now we have Vanguard boxes, which are more expensive than the old start collecting, sadly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Curse you, inflation. Um, mm-hmm. But that's also a great place to start, because you're going to get a little bit of everything in the army. You can start building and, and, and painting. No. What I was thinking about too, when I when when you go into a store, right, and you go look for one of these uh, start collectings as well, and you see these price tags jump out at you, mm-hmm. consider this. Um, you know, I always so I sometimes try to compare this hobby to other hobbies that you might do. Golf, fish, you know, or right. I mean, uh, for two hours of my time, I can go to a movie theater, grab a popcorn and a pop, 
and uh, maybe two people are going to this movie, and before I know it, I'm, I'm light at 50 bucks, yep. right? You know, and that's two hours of my life. You will spend infinitely more time yeah. in this hobbying and getting enjoyment out of this this hobby than you would uh, in those two hours for that 50 bucks. So when you, when you start thinking about prices there, um, it starts to help at least. And I know we're talking disposable income here, you know, right. and uh, – and that kind of thing, but, uh, but consider that too. But yeah, I mean, you, you could even start as simply as finding a hero in a box of models. I think there's no reason not to, but it, it, that's an excellent point where, yeah, it, it, I'm trying to think. So if I just take one of my, like, Daughters of Cain models over there, like my, one unit of Witch Elves, I spent, what, 50, 60 bucks on that. And let's call it, let's, with paint and clippers and tools and stuff, let's say, let's say I spent 70 bucks on that. Uh, in total, and I spent how much time enjoyment of the building and the painting? So that's hours of getting that value back already, and then mm-hmm. countless, countless, countless games, and then even just sitting there, like they're sitting on my shelf because I love them. Just staring yeah. at them, I, I feel like I get like money's worth, you know, because I really enjoy enjoy them. So, yeah, the 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 yeah. cost per time ratio. I'll come down money. sometimes, like every once in a while, and. Oh, you know, and I'll, I'll come down and I'll just kind of look at the stuff that I have, like built and painted, and I'll just kind of sit there and I like stare at it, especially if I'm kind of starting a project. <laughs> I just kind of look at it, like I'll bolt paint something new up or something. I'll just like, I spend way too much time <laughs> actually just staring at it and thinking about how cool it is and what I want to do with it and all that kind of stuff. So well, that's, um, very that, much creative outlet. Yeah, that prom- promise of potential whenever you're starting a huge new project when you get deeper into this hobby is always exciting. <laughs> yes. It never stops, actually. No. So I don't know whether that scares people or... <laughs> <laughs> it never does. <clears throat> but yeah, yeah uh, and then not to mention, too, like, definitely find local clubs. Find people who are playing. Like, go to your local game store and say, and meet people. Um, yeah. Because I, I still remember, too, even when I, you know, I had my army box when I was getting into it. You know, as being the young kid, there was a bunch of older guys who had... Um, disposable income so and they might have had old extra high off models for me they i was i was gifted lots of models as a young kid too so you know just to help make the army a little bit more robust or even at the very least someone allows me to use their army for a game so i can start playing while i'm still building up my faction so i've uh, for for all you older players out there who may be already into this hobby and listening to this podcast right now do that for younger players just give stuff away you know, yeah. I mean, you, if you've you, been doing this as long enough, uh, you're going to have extra stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, um, give I, things away, man, especially if it's a younger crowd. Book, give books away, even if it's like an older battle tome. Yeah. You know, let them, let them read about it. Let them, like, old get interested wars. in just the lore section. You know, I mean, I've got, I don't know how many old corn books over there at this point. The lore is not much different between <laughs> each one, is right? It, is there blood I don't need them anymore. Is there blood and skulls? You know, so... Right, there's blood and skulls, right? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so it's a, it's enough to know what the army is, and if they want to get into that army, if that kind of sparks an interest in them, then you know at least they have a little bit of background. So give that kind of crap away, you know, for sure. And even like a, as a early hobbyist too, white dwarf is my favorite thing, and I still buy them religiously because there's a nostalgia hit for me. But you know, I'm looking over. I have a huge stack of white dwarfs, huge. So I'm probably gonna just take a bunch. That I know, like you know, I have no real connection to, and I'm going to give them give them away to the younger younger guys and gals in the hobby in the club, because why not? They'll mm-hmm. they'll go spend hours into it, and it gets a little bit more value out of that. It gets a little bit more yeah. excited. It gets them to come back. And now I would I would caution if you are going to be, um, going to butcher this word, philanthropic, phil- no, philanthropic, which is close enough. Yeah, you're yeah. Good. You're going to be. Con- <laughs> 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 Ooh, my brain just like. You want to say this word, and I'm going to make sure you cannot say it. Once, once you said it that way, I couldn't even correct you because I couldn't come up with it anymore after that, too. So yeah. it was dumb. Um, <clears throat> but if you're going to, you could take that route uh, and, and be the, you know, the, the, the kind, it's dangerous to go alone here, take this. Um, don't just give a whole army. Because right. that that's, just give a few things here and there, let them have fun with it. Yeah. You know, you can't, you can't overload somebody new in this hobby. Um, right. But, you know, and then, and obviously for painting, like, you can look at tutorials online, you can just play around, have fun, ask people for help. Um, mm-hmm. Usually, like I said, clubs are a good place to do that. But 
one thing I really wanted to talk about too from this whole subject. Unless, did you have something else before we get to the gaming aspect of this, Neil? No, no, that's that's all good info. Okay. Um. Okay, so get into war gaming. So you got your army together. It's it's built, it's primed, or whatever. It's it's ready to go. You're gonna and you have your rules. What do you want to do before you go to your first game? And then what do you want to expect from that first game? Because like I said, this is a very make or break moment, I think, for a lot of people who want right. to play the game. Well, I, I think maybe to backtrack a little bit, <clears throat> when you're talking about your, your FLGS, your friendly local gaming store, right? You need to go there, you need to talk to people, and you need to ask a lot of questions, right? Just, you know, ask questions about the hobby, meet people, and then find somebody, if, if there's somebody who's willing to do a demo game with you, um, find those people yes. who are willing to do that. Um, make sure you find those people who are interested in teaching you the game because unfortunately I've heard many, many, many times of people walking into these, these learning games and the guy who <laughs> sits down to play across them um, just stomps them. Just stomps them out with uh, with yeah. a hard list, yeah. right? And that's why I say before you even go to play one of these games, you have to get to know people in the hobby. Um, don't just, you know, I, I would highly recommend, I mean, you could do this, but I'd highly recommend going to whatever shop, talking with people, getting to know people a little bit. I know that's out of a lot of people's comfort zones, especially people who kind of are into this, right? You know, there's yeah. <laughs> a lot of us are introverts in this hobby, let's be honest, right? Um, you got your outliers there as well. Um and it's always intimidating mm-hmm. to go into one of these shops when you don't know anybody. Usually there's a bunch of people sitting around a table somewhere, and they all know each other. And they're all yucking it up, and you walk into the store, everybody cranes their head, who's this new guy coming in? Um, easy to say this, but don't be intimidated by that. As- go up to the shop owner, go up to the person who's working there, tell them what you're interested in, tell, you, tell them you want to find out more about the hobby. I guarantee you half the table that's sitting over there is going to want to talk to you. Yeah, it, it's and you said yeah, and going to the shop owner is perfect because that's like a known source. You're probably comfortable with that person, and they'll mm-hmm. gladly introduce you because they know their customers. They know the ones that mm-hmm. are there to game because they're with them for hours throughout the day. Yeah. But it, it's the same thing I see. You know, people going to the gym. Like you don't want to ask. I don't want to talk. I don't want to. I'm intimidated by the the big guys lifting heavy weights. Well, they're the ones that are probably most willing to help you, and and are probably some of the kindest people there because. They want to see people grow. It's the same thing for the hobbyist uh, at a war game store. Like, we're there because we love that war game. We love Warhammer. Mm-hmm. You're there because you love Warhammer. Yeah. That's a, that's all you need to start forming a friendship is one common thing like that. Um, yeah. And we all want more people to play. Absolutely. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's fun too because you know whenever I I see like a a new guy or girl come to the hobby from like the club it's fun to watch them live their journey and i get to kind of like relive mine through theirs yeah and it's fun the other thing i'll say about that too if you do go to an flgs and that's not the experience you get leave that flgs leave that flgs yeah. and don't completely give up on the hobby find another shop yes. find somewhere else to go try again i mean if you strike out twice maybe give it a three strikes rule I mean, you really shouldn't even get one strike, honestly. Yeah. But uh, if, if by chance you do, you know, don't don't completely just drop the hobby. There are good good people in this hobby, and you will find them. Right, so. and it could even be, uh, you could go to the same store on a different night, different group of people there. You know, mm-hmm. it's 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 even to that level sometimes. So like, if if you don't drive with that one group, try a different night. Uh, yeah. and you'll you'll find someone that fits the how you want to play. And getting a demo game is always great. And then by a demo game, what I mean is. Someone goes, okay, they put out a few models of theirs. They put out, you know, they just put out a few few models, a small points army. They don't even tell you what the army size point is. They just give you the flow of the game. This is how it works. Mm-hmm. Here's some nuanced things. <laughs> Not even full rules. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, just, just the basic flow. That's a demo game. Right. Um, you know, then you get hooked. You start meeting them. You're in Discord chats with them, showing hobby progress. And then, yeah, you're going to go in and get your first full game in. With, with your rule set, whether it's a, a slimmer rule set or a the full rule set, depending on like your comfort level with, with uh, interpretation mm-hmm. of that. And I will say this is a rules game, yeah. right? You, so, you want to uh, read them. 
<laughs> you want to read them. You want to have a feel for them before you go in. Um, people should still be very forgiving of you. Yes. For years, honestly. It's, 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 a, it's <laughs> Decades a lot. Decades even. <laughs> it's still like I, people shake their head when they play me still at this day. So um, uh, multiple times. So um, yeah, make sure you find somebody who's forgive, forgiving of the rules and everything. But you do. there is a social contract with this game when you yes. sit down to play with somebody else to, to try to know as best as you can what the rules are. Even if, if you're starting light, even if you're just going base war scrolls, mm. you're not doing any kind of allegiance abilities, and you can dumb it down to just that, and I think that's actually a good idea to do that yep. um, to start out with. Um, but at the same time, read over them a few times before you go there. Yeah, okay. like I said, and just here and there, just just read through it. It's just like anything. If you were, if you're going to go, I don't know, to pick another hobby, you know, like I don't know, golf, golf. If you're going to golf, you want to know how the how the rules of the game work, the etiquette of the course, the or not the right. course, but like the etiquette of like you know, you right. be quiet while someone's swinging that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, you don't walk across somebody's lie. You yeah, know? exactly. Yeah, it's just like like that sort of. Stuff. You want to understand like that. Um, you know, and no, no, even if your game's not good, I'm a terrible mm -hmm. golfer, but I know mm -hmm. I pull my driver out here and I pull out my irons here and I putt here and I do this, you know, you know, you just, and you will pick up things along the way of things you don't realize. And don't be afraid to not know everything as far as like etiquette goes, uh, or like I said, or your rules, people are forgiving people will teach you. Like a lot, a lot of people don't know that usually, you know, whenever you're rolling dice, pick up your misses. Don't pick up your hits. Pick up your misses so that way your opponent can see your hits. And it's like, okay, and then just like quick glance, like, yeah, okay, no worries. Um, not everyone knows that, and that's fine. In your first couple of games, someone will be like, hey, you know, it's just more common courtesy to pick up your misses. And you go, oh, okay, and then you just adapt. Yeah. But Don't roll somebody else's dice unless you know them well. <laughs> Yeah. Or you have gotten permission. Yes. Some people can. Don't, yeah, don't touch other that. people's. Don't touch other people's models. That's like all yeah. that's just basic stuff. Um, right. Don't mow another man's lawn. Just. <laughs> <laughs> all the most important things. Yeah. The other. The other thing is, um, this game's cool. You might want to take pictures. You yeah, ever yeah. taken pictures of somebody of the game or anything? Don't put your camera over top of anybody else's models. Because <laughs> if that bad boy falls out of your hands, it explodes somebody's models. Yes. Uh, you know, that's a quick way to never be playing that guy again. So yes, uh, but for sure, and your your goal of the, that first game should be to just get better understanding of the rules of your army rules of your of the, of the flow of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, that should be like as far as the game state goes. That should be your goal. The other goal should be to get to know the person that you're about to spend two and a half, three, four hours with, depending on the size length of the game. Mm hmm. But yeah, you, you know, preparing yourself as much as possible, and also being open. Like if you're if you're going to the game, say you're going to your FLGS for the weekly game night, and maybe the people you know won't be there, might not be there. You know, you just want to make sure that whenever you're about to play somebody, if you don't know them, even if you're comfortable, it's like hey, just be be like, I just so you know, this is my first game, I'm new, so forgive my mistakes, and then it's like mm -hmm. and. Everyone's gonna be like, "Oh, okay, yeah, no worries." It just, it just, yeah. gives, it clues your opponent into the mindset of what they should be expecting from this game. And yeah, tell them, tell them what you're expecting from the game. Yes. Too. Like I want, like, like I'm here. Like I just want a learning game. I'm gonna ask you, like, if it's okay, I'd like to ask you questions. If I do something that looks, you know, looks like something that I shouldn't be doing. You know, if, if you want to give me some feedback, I would very much appreciate it, right? Because, yeah. you know, I want to get better at this. Yeah. So tell them what you're looking for out of the game. Uh, you know, I've got a buddy, uh, um, my buddy John. It doesn't matter how long you've been playing war games. The first thing he does every time he stands on the other side of the table is ask you what kind of game you're looking for. Yep. You want to play, do you want to play a hard game where we go like hard as, hard as balls match play lists? Or do you want to play something, you know, a little more light, a little bit more beer and pretzels? He mm -hmm. asks that every single game, and it's always appreciated. Yeah, that's that's. I wish that's uh, like a habit I could pick up um, to remember mm -hmm. to do that because that that's such a great thing. Mm -hmm. But it, the the you'll probably you're probably listening to this now, and and this will even go as so far as in not just your first game for me, but 
for like game after game after game, even to like your first couple tournament games. So you might be mm-hmm. 20 games in at this point. You go to like a one day tournament. You, you haven't heard me and Neil say this once. Your goal shouldn't be to win. Yeah. You're, lose. You, in fact, you're, you should lose. Yeah. <laughs> so. Go out and lose. Go like, right. Like, uh, I, and I'm going to use, it's a bit of a, this is actually what jogged the, the concept of this, this, um, topic for tonight for me but um one of the other things i like as far as video games go i really like fighting games and then street fighter 6 is coming out soon so i'm really fucking hyped for it um Mm. but it's been a while since i played one and i was usually just using joypad it's been even longer since i used the stick like you know like the arcade sticks but i actually bought one and i'm getting practice with it and there's a i'll give a shout out to this youtube channel it's much bigger than we'll ever be neil but it's Woldy Versus. But he does he does a show about getting into fighting games. And it's usually about, like, teach you about this game, that game, that sort of stuff. But, you know, he gives some good advice. Like, yeah, whenever you're about to go out and start swimming with the fishes, whether it's a war game or, or, or a fighting game or whatever, pick one thing. Like, if, for instance, say I'm, say I'm playing a fighting game. I want to get to, I want to be able to do Hadouken muscle memory like that every time. I should mm-hmm. do matches where I'm going to lose because my goal is to get that going in my head. I want to be able to get that out three or four times per match. That's my mm-hmm. goal. So take it to war gaming per se. You want to make sure you're not alpha charged. You want to you want to learn through a couple games how to deploy appropriately based upon scenario, your opponent's ability to move and charge, and that sort of stuff. So you know you might go to five games where your goal is I want to just make sure I deploy so I can't be alpha punched. And and that's a great thing. Maybe it's you want to be able to set up a good charge. Maybe it's you want to learn how to use um, redeploy better, to you know a, a little redeploy to help negate some someone's desecrate battle tactic or put a screen in front of a, a hammer unit to protect your glass unit, you know, like that sort of stuff. Like, and, and I did this recently at the uh, uh, Fabricators Forge Warpstone Wars. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Uh, I went with Slanesh. And my whole goal for the whole event, winning was not, a, I didn't care. Own 5 was perfectly acceptable from the start, before I even went, after I put my money down and said, I can lose every game, no worries. I want to learn how to use the temptation mechanic for Slanesh. That was my entire goal, and I succeeded at it, and I had a fantastic event. Mm-hmm. So that's just the mindset you need to go into, uh, 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 to, you know, tournaments specifically, but just gaming in general. It doesn't have to be a tournament, but like, Yes, managing expectations is something you're going to need to do mm-hmm. throughout the duration of playing in this hobby, okay? <clears throat> I don't care who you are. Um, you know, if, if you go through the game and you build yourself up to be one of these Team America guys, right? Um, if you're playing um, at AOS Worlds with a bunch of other guys who are really good, um, you know, manage your expectations, Yeah. right? <laughs> um, if... You are me, and you've been playing in tournaments for the last seven, eight years, whatever the heck it is now. Um, I still know generally what I'm capable of, what I normally do, and so that is the goal for me. And anything extra is butter, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's great after that. Um, So when you go into a first tournament experience, uh, you should not be um, trying to get three and two. I mean, try, by God, yeah, try yeah, to yeah, win. Yeah, yeah, try. No, no, that's not what I'm trying to say. But I'm just yeah. saying, don't expect it because you're going to be let down. You're going to have a bad experience. When you don't meet your own expectations, that is a disappointing thing mm-hmm. and something that can sour you on whatever you're doing, right? right? So set appropriate goals, set appropriate expectations for your start. Right, and, and I think you've made a very good point that I was missing there too, which is, Yes, try to win every game, but winning shouldn't be your goal. Not until mm-hmm. you get to a comfort level with, like, an army and the game system where, you know, like, I, th- and there's going to be times, you know, it's just, I'm saying, like, when you're getting into it, that shouldn't be your goal. Eventually, you, you, you know, you'll go to an event and your goal is to get best overall or best, best of this grand alliance or something. And that's fine once you're at that level. I mean, yeah. we, everyone does it. Like, I, you know. But like, still, I'm. I I have some best of Grand Alliance, you know that sort of stuff. 
but still, I just my re most recent tournament was because I haven't been playing enough, so my expectations changed to what do I want out of this tournament. Right. So, you yeah. know, it, it can be returning players too, and, and this is even a shout out to people coming, or maybe old fantasy players who are excited about Old World but never played anything else because they didn't like it, which, whatever, that's your choice. But you're coming back now, and Old World will come out, you probably need to manage your expectations because if you were tough shit back in the old world, well, <laughs> 8th edition, it might be different. You might right. need to just come in and just be like, I'm going to get some reps in. I want to learn how to play the game. I want to learn how to do this better. I want to make, you know, you could even be as, as your expectation could be, I want to learn how to use this unit to the best of its mm -hmm. ability. I want to find out what it's supposed to match up about. Now, yeah. like I said, and, and you don't have to set a predetermined set of time against it. You could just be, this is what I'm doing till I get it. And if it's one game or if it's 12 games. And then have yeah. your next thing you want to try and, you know, get. But manage your expectations is the biggest thing. Cause it, it, one, yeah. one thing I'll also say is <clears throat> in the process of losing, you know, it is a, it's a human condition to want to blame other things for why something went bad. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So in wargaming, that's usually blaming your list or bra blaming the army that you took. Or dice. Right? Or dice. Um, or, or dice. Or <laughs> it could be dice. But what I'll say is, do not, don't change things when you're starting too much. Okay? Yes. If you're constantly changing your list, if you go to a tournament, a one-dayer, and you go 0-3, and, and you say, I'm never playing this army again, right? You go to a different army. And you essentially are now starting over again, right? Um, you're going to have to learn from the bottom up. Mm-hmm. You know, some people hit a block where they say, this army isn't for me because it's not my play style. I would ask you to not to try to push past that at yeah. least a little bit, all right? Because losing isn't fun, mm -mm. okay? We, we, we live in America. This is a competitive, like, <laughs> like the whole country is based off a of competition. That's, that's what yeah. we do, right? You don't want to lose. Nobody wants to lose, all right? But um, it's important that you don't start doing the thing where you're jumping from, you know, stone to stone. Uh, blaming other things for the losing and everything else. Stick with you. Make some small modifications if you want to to your list, yeah, but don't go overboard. Be like, yeah. ah, you know what? I want to try. Like, uh, I, this hero's buffs didn't really do anything. Let me try this other hero's buffs, or right. maybe I'll reinforce this unit and I have to sacrifice another one. That sort of stuff. It's yeah, absolutely. It's I always um, yeah. I always say that nothing nothing sells models, uh, Warhammer models better than losing. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's... The people lose and they go right into the shop and they're like they just get their wallet out and they're like yeah. I'm buying this and I'm buying that and I'm buying this all right yeah um, you don't have to do that immediately play what you got <laughs> okay learn what you got if it's still not going well after that and you've learned to the point where you're like this is definitely the reason why I'm struggling yeah. then move away in some other direction whether it's buying a new unit whether it's swapping something out in your list whether um, yeah, okay, I've played 10 games with this army. I can't stand the, sh the fact that I can't shoot in this army. Okay, maybe it's time to look into something different. Right. Okay, well, but and, and even don't, with the, don't just do the knee-jerk reactions. The things with sub-factions in this army, with the different allegiance abilities. You might be able to take the same list in a different sub-faction within your book, and it changes how it all completely plays. Yeah. Which is never a bad thing. But yeah, like you said, it, it, it's, uh, what is it? Don't fear the man who's thrown a thousand different punches once. Fear the man who threw one punch a thousand times. Right. Yeah, like because they know how to throw that punch really hard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> really, really hard. But um, trying to think what else is a, a kind of good tips. Oh, um, learning to be gracious in your defeat and more importantly, learn from your defeat. I think we all struggle with this. We do. Yeah, and it's you have ups and downs with it. I've had times where it's been rough and I've had times where it's okay, well, what what can I do better? Okay, like my, right. for me, brew hammer. Okay, screens. I need like yeah. I, I well, it's because and I'll, I'll be honest cuz like it didn't it never occur to me because when I was playing prior like second edition, which is when I played a lot more Sigmar just because my way time worked out. I didn't really worry about screens because I had units of 30 witch elves. They were their own screen because no one could do yeah. enough damage to kill them. And mm -hmm. I always had enough to do a nice counterpunch. Now, killing 20 to 30 witch elves is super easy because the way the game's changed. So now I need screens if I'm going to keep those guys, girls, guys, those girls alive. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So, like, you know, it's you have to learn from every single loss on some level. Unless you're drinking too right. much and having fun with friends and you lose, then maybe right. you're not, maybe no one's learning anything from that game. But. Yeah. If you're, uh, I mean, if you're one of these salty losers, man, I can't tell you, like, nothing makes me want to never play. Like, if I hear about somebody that is one of these salty losers that just, like, is mad at the world, is throwing their own models, is doing this, like, like I never, and I do mean never want to play you. I don't even care if you get better. If, like, if, if, if I hear you and you get that stank on you, I do not want to play you, right? Because I don't want to have the, I don't want to take, you know, the three, you know, four hours of my, of my weekend that is, is, I mean, I had to work to get here to the shop yeah. to play this game and have that experience, all right? And so, and I know, like, I've str- I've had those moments where I've been that guy to some of my friends that I play a lot. Mm-hmm. I know they can tell you that some of them have had it against me, too, because nobody wants to lose, right? Especially don't want to lose the guys we play the most. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say, especially if you're playing somebody you don't know, you have got to be a gracious winner because as bad as you're feeling about the loss, right, the other guy's working hard to win, too, yeah. right? You don't want to... so he, he and... doesn't want to leave the, the table feeling, like, bad about winning. Yeah, you, like you shouldn't you, have to have that feeling. And if you lose you know? a game, it shouldn't be it's like, oh, I lost because my dice rolls. It's like, no, maybe you just were outplayed, and maybe you misplayed a few things. I, actually, Halo. Can, can I actually? Can I just say it's never the dice rolls? It's never so the dice leave. rolls. <laughs> you remember? <laughs> yeah, it's never the dice rolls. Um, I say like, Halo just did a great video. Uh, it's less than twenty minutes. Everyone should go watch it. It's about the double turn in Sigmar specifically. And it pretty much lays out, like, because people are, are, are wanting to be like, oh, the double turn's stupid, double turn's stupid. It's like, it's not stupid. Okay, and if you ever say, and we've all said it, because we're all learning. If you ever say, I lost because of the double turn. Okay, well, what happened before that double turn? Because that's where you actually lost. Right. And But that's just learning, and that's as you go. So, like, you have to kind of get used to stepping back and going, okay, and talking to people. Talk to your friends. You know, talk to talk to other people, talk to your opponent, and say, "Okay, how could I have? What could I have done differently?" Because everyone's gonna. I mean, we're, we're we have a podcast, so clearly we understand that people have opinions and want to talk about stuff. Right, but if right. you if you ask your opponent after you just lost a game, be like, "Hey, what do you think I could have done differently?" They'll give you advice. They'll give you advice from their lens, which is they know what their army can do probably fairly well about how. You could have negated it. Like maybe it's like, oh, maybe you put a wrong matchup on, on this side. Maybe you went too aggressive. Maybe you didn't go aggressive enough. Yeah. That sort of stuff. So, I played, uh, you know, I recently, well, I say recently, but it hasn't been too recently at this point. I played Cole, right? I've never beat Cole ever, yeah. right? And so we played a, 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 we, we played a learning game where he was giving me advice and things through it. Now, now if you go back a few podcasts, you'll hear me uh, bragging like crazy about the fact that I beat him <laughs> in this game. Um, I know what it is, right? Um, we sat there, we talked it out. Like that was the game, and that was what we established beforehand. And so, you know, when you have somebody that uh, that is better at the game than you, right? Um, if you can manage to find somebody to have that practice, that learning game, do that, right? Because it's only going to ever help you. Yeah, I say I remember too specifically, like um, you know, Cole for one, and then uh, Alex uh, when they were local, you know, younger guys. And I remember playing them early on. I remember having to, like, you know, pull the pedal off the gas because, you know, I was just slightly better at this game. Maybe I had a stronger army. And then over time, I realized, like, I'm not pulling off that gas anymore. And over time, I'm pushing really hard. And then I go, I haven't beat them in six months. What the hell's going on? <laughs> it's because the future is now, old man. Uh, right. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's it's managing your expectations and, and understanding. Because, like, I... I I won't lie, and this is a topic maybe for another show, maybe even next week, but um, kind of like looking at where I'm at maturity-wise within the hobby. I feel like it's it's weird, almost like cyclical in some ways, because like I've, I've gone, I've done a lot. I, I'm very blessed. I've done a lot in this hobby, but I keep looking now, and the last thing I care about is winning any single one of my games. Right. But that takes a lot to get to that point, because, you know, I have won... You know, it's not a ma- I never won a major event. I, I, I never dedicated time well enough for that. But I've I've won smaller events. I've done that sort of stuff. You know, I've, and you know, you hear all the time. It's like, yeah, man, you want to go three and two. You want to, you know, try you know, t- win as many games as you possible. But I feel like I've reached a point personally where winning is the 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 
winning is the lowest level of mm. need for me. I'm not saying cherry it's not, on top. Yeah, it's like if I win, cool, but like it's it's mm. so far removed from what I want out of the games, which is interesting because it's like you know I go to tournaments. Okay, well tournaments are all about competition and winning. So like, it, like I said, this is a different topic for another one, but you know just understand that I guess the pull from this back to the main topic we're on now. Um, as you go through your hobby journey, your expectations, you'll have to change them because you'll change what you want. You'll go through a cycle where you want to be hyper competitive. You'll go for a cycle where you want to be narrative. You just want to do cool things. You'll go for a cycle where you just want a hobby. You just want to paint models. And it's okay to paint an entire army and never put it on the table. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. And I'll say too, you know, make sure that you're at least considering what's going on on the other side of the table. Right. Yeah. It's especially with how you're, I don't want to say acting. I, I guess, you know, how you're acting, how you're, you're presenting yourself throughout the course of the game. Right. Um, this whole social contract thing that we always spew about when we talk mm -hmm. about, it, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. It's two people playing. It's not some ambivalent 13-year-old voice on the other side of a video game playing <laughs> Street Fighter against you, right? Um, yeah, you can't talk smack about them. That's what it is. wrong, right? I've never, heard, to... I've never heard anyone, anybody at Torment talk smack about someone else's mother. <laughs> right. It doesn't work right. well. No, no, because somebody might reach across the table, right? Yeah. And uh, they're probably bigger than you. <laughs> and, and the tables are smaller now. It's easier to reach across and smack some. Right. <laughs> smack right. the taste out of your mouth. <laughs> oh. So just just you know well, present yourself well. Don't don't be a sore loser. Don't be throwing models. Don't be blaming dice. You know don't be celebrating every victory you get. Although that's easy to do because we always want to cheer for the things that we did right. You know yeah. this is this is a game, right? We're trying to win it. We're happy when when I go in and I smash somebody's unit off. But uh, just understand, as happy as you are, the other guy is kind of like, fuck, I fucked that up. Yeah. You know, yeah. so and maybe he doesn't want to be laughed in his face, right? And it's it's okay <laughs> to, to, to screw something up afterwards and yeah. just be like, you know, and go, ah, shit, I fucked up. But, like, say, say it with, like, yeah. like, it just is what it is. I've, you know, take it from the, you are like, you're learning as it go. But, like, no one's going to be high-fiving your defeats, but high-five their successes. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, give, give, give. Because they'll do it back to you, and it feels good. And not even that, not even just the the person across the table. Because Neil, look at me and you. How good of friends are we? And we we played next to each other, not across from each other. Right. And it was just like, ah, this guy's right. cool. I mean, we talk a little bit on Twitter, yeah. but like, we became friends by yeah. being next to each other. <laughs> well, we were. I don't, I don't. I don't remember the person I played. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I remember you being next to me and us being next to like the streaming lights, which were way too hot. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I, yeah. The bald guys were sweating like crazy. Yeah. yeah, I, I, I legitimately can't tell you who the hell I played. Not even what their army was. I remember you, but like I said, and that's not saying that's what you is going to happen. But be aware yeah. that it's not just the direct yeah. across; it's the vibe of the room. Right. You're gonna get more from this hobby. Um, from the hobby itself than you ever will from the win. Yeah. Period. And I and I don't care if you're playing. Uh, I, I would if I if we had Bill Souza on this right now and you talked about all the th all the crazy things the hobby has given to. Now he wins all the time. Right? He wins a lot. But I would I would be surprised if he didn't say that the hobby had still given him more than all of the wins. Yeah, right? I, and I, he probably too like taking it from like where we're at getting into wargaming. I don't think he was disagree with what we're saying either because I, I, I've, I've never beaten Bill, but I've been in the room when Bill has lost a game yeah. <laughs> and he still looks like he's having a time of his life. Everyone, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. Noah, Caleb, Scooter, um, just, just pick any, anybody, any of the, the high caliber people like that, yeah. that are the yeah. ones winning the, these events all the time. Right. They're both having fun and there's, you know, it, but, Needless to say, like if you are wanting to get into war gaming, set expectations. Don't be afraid to go lose. Don't be afraid to talk to people. You know, yeah. like you have to put yourself out there and realize that someone else is doing the same back at you. Yeah. Yep. And uh, you know, some of the worst games I've ever had, I've won. And I'm not saying that I didn't want to win. It's just I was screwing stuff up. I didn't know my rules. The guy across the table was having to help me out with my rules. And, you know, you wind up winning the game because of that. 
and I've never felt worse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? And I won the game, right? Um, and it sucked because of all of the things that I was doing incorrectly and just because I knew I wasn't giving the person on the other side a good experience, right? So yeah. just have that in the back of your mind. Right. And if you're – it's the same thing. If you're – if you are – you're, if you're a kind person and you're smiling, guess what? People, when they look at you, they're going to smile back. It's like that sort of thing. If you put out the positive energy, you're going to get it back. All right. And you'll feel more fulfilled for having received it and having done that. So, yeah. and, like, and also, too, like, hey, if you're in a bad mood, <laughs> if you're at a GT and you're just in a bad mood, you don't have to fake it. You're allowed to drop from an event, too. Don't be afraid. You, like, There's no contract saying you have to go through everything. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Just remember, just yeah. always remember that you don't have. If you're halfway through an event and you're just like, you know what, this event's just not working for me, you can just chill and hang. No one's going to complain about right. that. We've got ringers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, that's loosely what I think we covered. Most of what I kind of wanted to hit on this, Neil. Do you have any mm-hmm. any other maybe things we might have forgotten about? Off the top of my head, I hope that covers everything. But uh, I think it's an important discussion. Um, hopefully there are, you know, at least one or two people who are new to the hobby who, who find this and, and listen to it. And if you know somebody who is new to the hobby, um, please direct them to this. Yeah. You know, and, and listen and, to some of these thoughts and everything. So, yeah, and, and, and hopefully they find it useful. And warn them <laughs> that this isn't like a, a guide. This is just two guys who've yeah. been through it just kind of trying to right. give out any knowledge that we have on that sort of topic. So, yeah. and we've helped, we've helped many people get into this hobby too. So like we've, we've seen it all. Right. I've seen people come into it and bounce off this hobby quicker than you've ever seen. And yeah. I've seen people slowly creep in and become more hooked than I ever thought possible. So, and uh, as, as you know, we're trying to give all this advice and probably sound holier than thou about some of this shit. We've probably fucked this shit up <laughs> enough to know like we probably made all these wrong errors along the way oh so. my goodness i uh, yeah absolutely <laughs> well, so it's it's Hopefully you'll learn from uh, our mistakes along the way here so yeah absolutely yeah <laughs> oh, hopefully at the end of it we have helped more people join this hobby than we accidentally shoot away from our <laughs> stupidness <laughs> right. over time that's that's the hope yes that's the hope for sure well neil uh, before we go i want to i want to bring in one more segment that we're going to do i think each show what's your what's your hobby commitment for next week hobby commitment for when for, for next before next week next for time next week well, before, before, before our next recording depend on whether matt gives me my models or not <clears throat> but um mm. <laughs> i will have something built and painted for age of sigbar before next week okay just a single model or something single model if uh, it'll be at least uh, Brock Grunson will be will be painted and ready to go. Nice, there we go. Uh, my commitment will be to not just have this watchtower done and ready, but to also have a plan out of my collection of terrain over here on the left that I'm alluding to on video. Um, have a a set fantasy table using that terrain in this new watchtower. That's my commitment for next week. Nice, cool. All right. Um, and to bring it back all the way back to the beginning, go to the fucking gym. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, you out there, happy hobbying and stay Stormcast strong. Mm-hmm.